Hello guys! Today I'll tell you how we launched Arduino Uno into space, what were the results and what went wrong. The goal was to check how Uno performs in discharged atmosphere in extremely low temperatures. Going to the North Pole is a bit expensive, so we decided to launch it into space. It is to reach beyond Armstrong's line, which is approximately 19 km high, and then descend. All the time it is going to be performing one simple task – blinking with LED number 13. The ascending will be carried out not by a rocket, but by a weather balloon. It is a bad idea to launch a balloon in the center of a populated city. That's why we had an agreement with the flying club and got a permission from the dispatch service to launch it far away from the city. We had spent the whole night on the go and by the sunrise we were 200 kilometers away from home on the launch site. There we filled Totex 1200 weather balloon with a bit more than 3 cubic meters of helium. In the process of ascending the balloon would expand and at the maximum height of about 25 kilometers it would reach 8.5 meters in size and eventually blow up. A parachute prevent the gear from hitting the ground. We attached a basket to the balloon where the onboard computer, power supply and three GoPros were fixed. The onboard computer would log the flight data and help us locate the gear after the flight. The Arduino Mega was the basis of the onboard computer. We connected two sensors, the Hermetic Thermometer DS18B20 and the Barometer LPS331. The first measures the outside temperature. The second measures the temperature inside the basket as well as the atmospheric pressure. The GPS module was to give us the coordinates and additional calculations of the height. We added a GPRS shield to record all the data on the micro SD card and transmit the signal to the ground via mobile network. As is common in aviation, we are going to duplicate all the systems. We use the exact visual development environment to create a program for the board computer. According to our plan, the ascension rate was around 300 meters per second. After the launch, the balloon should have reached the height of 19 kilometers in an hour. It should have reached the maximum height in one and a half hours. After the balloon pops, it will take the basket half an hour to descend with the parachute at a rate of 5 meters per second. If the rate is lower, the wind will carry the box far away from the designated landing zone. If the rate is higher, the equipment on the inside will be smashed. But how can we be so sure the system would survive the lower temperature up in the sky? Because we performed an experiment. We had a lunchbox and 16 liters of liquid nitrogen. With its help, we wanted to lower the temperature of the board to negative 100 Celsius. There were no concerns about Atmega, nor were there concerns about the capacitors or quartz, which should work under even more extreme temperatures than these. The 13th output of each board was still blinking. Italian Textilite turned out to be more sturdy and durable than junk food. The boards survived even when we added water, while the hamburger didn't even survive regular cooling. In fact, short-term cooling shouldn't damage electronics. In reality, it is way more important how Arduino handles long-term low temperatures. The sun noticeably started to rise above the horizon. We were a little bit behind the schedule. If we didn't hurry, we could miss the blue hour. Mentally praying, we released the balloon into the sky. We felt the real triumph four minutes later, when the first SMS arrived from the Borg computer. The height was around one and a half kilometers. The inside temperature increased by one degree. The outside temperature was warmer compared to the ground temperature. It seemed like the next 10 minutes lasted forever. We were waiting and nothing happened. We didn't receive another SMS, neither in 10 minutes, nor in 20, 
nor in a half an hour. We had to blindly find our balloon. We started to move to the supposed landing zone, hoping that the homemade board computer Arduino Mega would wake up and give us the coordinates. For almost two hours we hadn't had a single message. Best case was that the GPRS shield had gone out of the mobile network coverage. According to the Cambridge Weather Balloon Trajectory Calculation model, the balloon was supposed to land in a sparsely populated area, though there were a few villages there on the map, so we were hoping for a working mobile connection. We received a new message from the probe halfway to the predicted drop zone. We stopped at the nearest cafe to dig into the coordinates. Google Maps marked a location about a dozen kilometers far from the most favorable possible drop zone. A satellite map of the area encouraged us even more. The balloon was supposed to drop in the fields, so there would be no searching in gullies, no taking it off trees or pulling it out of a lake. And there even was just a kilometer from the nearest road. The app promised that just in an hour and a half we would see the remainings of our balloon. Of course, later we faced the reality. The AI couldn't account for the weather and we didn't want to achieve the recommended 60 km per hour on a slippery narrow road. Besides, those liters of hot coffee had to go somewhere. The real problems started 3 km from the target. The country road was too tough for a compact city car. However, in the trunk, by occasion, we stumbled upon 3 pairs of brand new Siberian skis. When we discussed the project, we argued the most about the season for the launch. Should we do it now, in the winter, or should we wait for the summer? It turned out the winter was indeed the better option, as we found the basket in the river feeder. If the gear had dropped here in summer, it would just drown without sending a single message. While in winter, one could see the orange basket from over a hundred meters. Two hours of flight and seven hours of standby were nothing for Arduino Uno. The board was still blinking that LED number 13, while GoPro display said full, which inspired further optimism. We also managed to find the balloon itself. Well, what was left of it? Upon launch the material had been thicker than war gloves, but then it seemed thinner than Chinese silk. At the first glance it was clear that the first logger had gone bad. Back at 10 km when the module temperature dropped to negative 9 Celsius, it failed. The second one pleased us much more. The doom sign, no set, hadn't appeared once after the module had been initially set up. All the other sensors had coped as well. The log had all the information considering the satellite and barometer altitude, temperature inside and outside the basket. Flight trajectory records exceeded all our expectations. In an hour and 20 minutes, the balloon reached almost 28 kilometers. According to GPS, the highest altitude was 27,706 meters. The probe set off for the journey at 6.30 am near Lake Plishevo. Literally in a minute it was caught into a warm upstream current. The outside temperature raised 11 degrees while the vertical speed reached 8 meters per second. Twenty minutes later, the balloon was at an elegant mark of 7777 meters. Air temperature dropped to negative 49 Celsius and the temperature inside the basket was still at negative 1.4 Celsius. The next 20 minutes witnessed the balloons ascending to 14 and a half kilometers. We broke the tropopause, the border between tropo and stratosphere. The air started to gradually get warmer, it was already negative 47 Celsius. 
It was at that height where 87 years ago Picard's first flight stopped. The Swiss had it worse than our computer, it was already 40 Celsius inside the first stratostat. At that point our equipment bay saw the lowest temperature of negative 5.4. 20 minutes later we were at 20 km. Armstrong's line was 600 meters below, according to IMU barometer, the pressure of 0.06 atmospheres was back at 19,400 meters. We were at the border of near space. For 22 more minutes we were going up, the ascending speed lowered and we almost stopped at 27 km. It got warmer to the pretty earthly negative 34 and the equipment bay went up to about 0 Celsius. In another hour and 37 minutes we were at Apoi. The GPS showed the maximum height value of 27,706 meters. Pressure dropped to 0.01 atmosphere. The Arduino was blinking the LED number 13. One blink per 25 frames. The balloon was at its breaking point. It had already expanded to 8 meters. A few moments later, the latex shell tore. The probe headed straight down, reaching 216 kilometers in just 20 seconds. There was not enough air surrounding the probe to fill the parachute. By 25 km the atmosphere started to slow down the fall. The vertical speed dropped to 190. The descending speed went back to double digit values by 70 km of height. Up to 10,000 meters the speed kept declining down to 55 km per hour. At 9,500 we got in a turbulence, and for half a minute the descending speed lost 40 km per hour. It went from 52 to 14 and then back up to 57. After that everything stuck to the plan. The altitude reduced, so did the speed. So the moment of hitting the planet happened at a significantly higher velocity than we had expected, at 30 km per hour. It was faster than 8 meters per second. It was hard, literally. A parachute of one and a half meter wasn't enough. Camera holders folded, but the basket survived the fall, and the computer kept logging. That was how our sturdy Arduino Uno went to space and back. It is still blinking that LED number 13 on the wall in our studio, while we keep looking at the sky. There are many new heights to reach.